with a Christmas Eve morning breakfast. Hi, Alan. Hey, Alan. I got some orange juice here. Yeah, well, it's commotion out here right now, and okay. it's crazy. We're passing out orange juice and uh, uh, milk and uh, hot cho or chocolate and all that good stuff. And Phil, uh, thank you so much uh, from uh, Manteca Ford Mercury. This is your place. And, you don't have to do this, but you do this every year. Well, you know, it's important that we do what we can. I think if enough people care, we can change anything in this world. And, you know, we've had a lot of support this year. Our friends from Crystal Dairy and Foster Farms is a big contributor to this event. And uh, we're just really blessed to be able to serve our community. Uh, now, this is open to, you know, the people you've been promoting it just, you know, throughout throughout the, the, like, the local newspapers, Manteca Bulletin, something like that. Last year, you had 1,500 people. That's we all. did. We had a line going outside the door around the corner. So, um, you know, the way the word spreads pretty quickly, but what's really neat is every kid that's here will have an opportunity to have a great meal along with their family, and then they have a chance to meet Santa. You meet Santa, and then you get to take a picture with Santa. And get take a picture with Santa. You keep that as a keepsake. We'll give you the picture right on the spot, and also uh, the kids will have a, an opportunity to get an unwrapped toy that's age appropriate. Oh, that is so much fun. Yeah, I saw I saw the toys back there, and now let me tell you, I saw football, and I saw a lot of cool like uh, little transformers and things like we got that. Bikes, we got all kind of stuff. Oh, that is so cool. And you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that, that Walgreens is a big supporter. They gave us yes. the gift of health. So everybody who comes out, they have an opportunity to get a free flu shot. So, um, you know, we're really, really lucky. That, free uh, flu is shot. Free. That is so, I mean, this is something that obviously everyone's uh, super excited about. And the food smells so good. I know. I can't wait. I'm going to be the last one to eat, uh, but I, I can't wait. That is okay. But where, do you, where did you find uh, like all these people to volunteer? Because a lot of people volunteering today. They are, you know, the people in, in Manteca and the, in the Central Valley are so gracious. They heard about the event that we're doing and they came out and they said, hey, we just want to give a hand. So um, we appreciate the support of everybody, the community, and, and really, this is... Uh, yeah, this a lot of smiling faces, and it's not too cold outside, so they're, they're, they're okay right now, even though they have heat lamps out there. Absolutely. You know, thank God that the weather today, yeah. through the grace of God, that it is beautiful. I mean, oh. the sun is out and the smiles are up, and you know, when the uh, praises go up, the blessings come down, and we have a lot of blessings today. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, we got to get back to work here because we got some hot chocolate, I mean, right, some chocolate right. and some oranges passed out. Coming up, we're going to go check out how they distribute all the toys uh, to the kids. Just a real, I love this time of the season because you get uh, smiles and you get a lot of orange juice. Did you need an orange juice? You yeah, that's milk? exactly what the, juice, milk? the holiday spirit's about. Orange juice, chocolate milk. Some more. Here you go. Orange juice. Good for you, man. Thank you, Alan. Check back in with you a little bit later on in Manteca. Oh, I love it. Kids show up. How fun. Beautiful time out here in Manteca, Manteca Ford Mercury. I mean, thank you so much, Phil, for hosting this. I mean, and having us come by for this because it's just a beautiful time out here. Now, uh, Santa's here, of course. All those toys, Santa and people from the community and yourself have put together. Uh, what a great time. And they had their breakfast this morning. Now, what's going on in here? Well, now they have a chance to meet Santa, and every kid that's 12 and under will receive an unwrapped toy. So it's a great it's a great event that we're doing. And, you know, we're so uh, blessed to have the community come together because it really takes a village to raise a child. And to have the, the city of Manteca help us with this event, uh, it's just amazing. Look at the people that are here. I mean, a lot of smiling faces. Uh, hundreds, and that's hundreds of people, and they are all smiling. It's just a beautiful weather, and everyone's just happy. And not only a lot of volunteers, but your family has volunteered their time. They have. They have. It's part of our, it's a tradition that we've um, been doing for years now. This is our fifth year doing this. Um, again, so many great support. Walgreens, we have a free uh, clinic here for anybody who needs a flu shot. It's free. Come on down, and um, we'll take care of you there. Um, and so many supporters, uh, Shea Cherie, which is a, a part of the golf course, they donated um, a lot of the food, and they're preparing the food, and they're transporting it over to feed the, uh, the people uh, that It we was have. good food. I haven't got a line, but I know I saw a lot of uh, happy people out there, and uh, a lot of happy kids, especially when you see all these great toys that they're getting. I see basketball out there. there. I see uh, dolls. I see uh, I see a bike out there. I see a lot of uh, teddy bears out there. It's just a, it's something for everyone to be a part of it, especially because it's honest, honest to God truth. This probably was some of their only presents they're going to get this year. So these kids. You know, that may be the case, and, and I know that our economy is going to bounce back. It's, it's going to turn around, and I'm very confident in that. And um, I, Again, I'm just so overwhelmed with the amount of support that we continue to get with this event. Um, there's so many great people. I, I can't thank everybody enough. Um, um, and it's a lot of, I just feel, you feel that the Christmas season here is all about just giving back, and that's what you have been doing, and uh, what a uh, great location. Again, we're off, off of uh, Main Street. Come by and say hi. You can say hi to Santa if you can get room, because there are so many people out here who are uh, getting ready to get a toy out here. And then, uh, let me see, maybe I can get into, we're, we're going to see if we can get the, this picture in. Let's see what this uh, boy picks. Oh, all right, he's smiling. Good smile. That's an A-plus smile. Okay. Did you get it in? Okay, now what toy is he going to get? What does, what's the toy of choice for you? 
What do you think? What he's do you think? overwhelmed. That right one back now. there? Oh, wow. Okay, look what he's going to get. He's going to get. Go ahead and toss that. Look at this. A remote control car for you. Awesome. Look at how happy. Yes. Yay. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Oh, the spirit is out here in uh, Manteca. Thank you so much. I'm going to take Minnie with me. We're going to go dancing. I'll see you guys later. Um, uh, all right. Nice. Nice work, son. You know, every time you hear that bell, it's $100. We're not being rude to you or anything like that. This is very cool. Now, Alan Sanchez and I, we have a lot of history as far as the yeah. new side and stuff like that. But standing with us, we have some good local history. We have the fire chief who also is the president of the Boys and Girls Club this year. But also we have Phil Waterford. And Phil is with us, and we were just talking, 17 years. Here, 17 years. And uh, Alan was, did his first non-paid gig for your, for Channel 31 yeah. at your store. I remember that. I remember that. We had an event, uh, a child safety identification program, and you came out and uh, you know helped spread the word. And I think you put a bite suit on. From yeah, I got, I got a, a bite suit on uh, from Attack Canine Bite Suit, which was uh, pretty interesting because uh, I said, I'll try the, the bite suit on, see if it works. I didn't think they were going to go for it. And as soon as I did that, uh, they said, uh, all right, just fill out this waiver form. And, uh, you're 18 plus, right? Yeah, okay. Fill out this waiver form. You could be a part of it. And uh, we had a good time, and you had a great turnout too, because it was all for a great cause. Because you really, you believe in this community. I do, you know, and I believe if enough people care, we can change anything. It doesn't matter what it is. And you know, the Boys and Girls Club is a big part of the history of Phil Waterford and my brothers and I. We, uh, uh, I grew up in Chicago, and I grew up in a pretty financially challenged environment. And I'll tell you, you know, it really takes a village to raise a child. It's not just you know the parents telling the kids what to do. It's the whole village, the whole community coming together. But my brothers and I were a part of the Boys and Girls Club, and something that I remember that's so distinctive, when we'd walk through the doors, they had these pennants hanging up, and the pennants had names of different people that were from the club who had gone on to do different things. Well, one of the kids, his name was Craig Hodges, and I remember Craig. He was a little bit older than me, but he went on to go to uh, California. He went to Long Beach State, and I was like, wow. He's in California. I wonder what people in California do. Like, is this, is he hanging around with the movie stars? Like, I didn't know I was dreaming. Well, this kid wound up making the basketball team, and uh, then he wound up playing professionally for the Chicago Bulls with a guy named Michael Jordan. Yeah, and I know actually, him. Yeah, you might know who he is, number 23. He also won a championship. And I got to tell you, you know, great futures start right here at the Boys and Girls Club, and this is a perfect safe haven for, you know, kids. It gives them an alternative to some of the foolishness that goes on out in the world today. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that helps this club survive is great leadership. Uh, the fire chief, you've stepped up and you've been on the board for a while, and this year you're the president. And to have great community colleagues and partners like Phil has got to make your heart feel good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, as a, a leader in the community, as a fire chief, I get the opportunity to see um, generous people, what they do for, for um, the community. And Phil, you know, not only for the Boys and Girls Club, but is just generous um, for the entire city. So much appreciated. I do appreciate it a great deal. Phil, now, uh, you're here tonight, and we appreciate that, but a lot of times we don't let people just come in just to hang out. <laughs> yeah, you want to share or tell us? Well, yeah, there's a couple of things. I know, is there a street or something for sale? A street? Yeah, there is. Name, <laughs> street? You know, there's a guy, his name is R.C. Owens. Many of you are yeah. familiar with this man. I mean, he was significant because he uh, helped so many people. He's responsible for a lot of... Uh, a lot of positive things that happened in this community. He pulled the community together. He had golf tournaments. And unfortunately, RC is not here in the physical sense, but he's here in spirit in every respect. And um, I think it would be a real honor if we named that street RC Owens Drive, RC Owens Lane. You know, I used to worry about being successful, but I found what's more important is to be significant. When you're significant, you have an opportunity to impact other people's lives, and that lasts many a lifetime. So I don't worry about being successful anymore. I want to be significant like R.C. Owens. So whatever that bid is, I'm going to make sure that we're the highest bidder. Oh, wow. and, and also, you know, for those of you that are watching this on TV, your pledge is so important. It is so critical that you give what you can, whether it's $5, $10. Your pledge is important because it goes to a great cause and, and if you want to invest in something invest in your invest in your community and help these kids give these kids a chance because the heroes are the ones that they see right here at this club you know all the people behind the scenes the the uh, instructors the, the teachers that are here helping out um, most of these kids will never meet some of these professional athletes and entertainers but they'll meet the kids right are the the uh, people right in their own city block and we have a lot of great community leaders here you know 
This guy here, he gets yeah. it. This guy, he gets it. You know, Dennis Wyatt. We got a lot of wonderful people here that uh, make a difference and that are significant. So uh, it's an honor for me to be here. I have something pretty significant that I'm going to give out. Uh, I don't know if I should do it now. I would. I would. We're here. Okay. All right. Well, everybody's waiting. Oh, well, I see. On behalf of Phil Waterford, Manteca Ford, and Exotic Highline, we have a check that we want to give. And um, actually, you know, we're going to increase this a little bit. Um, this check is for seven thousand dollars. But uh, I think we're going to increase that. Let's make it $10,000. $10,000, $10, people. $10,000. Wow. Uh, you know what? It, I'm sweating. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? That is so awesome. Yeah, you know, if you think about a contribution of $10,000, it, it costs $2 to provide for the day a child between the ages of 6 and 18 here at this club. $2. We have $10,000. A difference that it makes is that you are going to create an environment for positive choices. And what you said is absolutely true. Yeah. It's the, the difference you make isn't, uh, uh, it's, it's not in these dollars. It's no, the it's difference not. you make in the young adults that are going to leave here and be great, productive adults in our society. So, yeah. wow, kind of cool, $10, huh? $10,000 more time, people. I mean, that's just, I, honestly, thank you so much. That's very I, cool. I'm excited that. Thank you. Uh, very I mean, you know, nice. it's easy yeah. that you see these guys recognize what, because you are in the community. It's not like you're coming out from, you know, cities away and thinking, oh, I'm just going to throw money to the cool. You see these kids, you know, down your street, and you see the kids, you know, on the streets, and it's just a beautiful thing that you're giving right back to them, so we really appreciate that. We appreciate the community. And you know, it's kind of interesting because when dealers reach a certain level of success, they built these new facilities, this big Taj Mahal dealership. It's almost like a monument to themselves. I don't know why they do it. And I never got caught up in that. You know, every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets his wings, yeah. and you, I think $100 is donated. Yeah, exactly. So that's a great thing, too. So, but anyway, um, we, you know, we paid our dealership off a long time ago, and we've gone through some pretty tough economic times. But we decided to not build. We want to keep our facility where we're at. We want to stay put, and we want to keep our expenses low so that we can give back to the community. And that's just what we're doing. So we appreciate the support of the community. And I want you to know that when you support us, we give it right back to the community. So, you know. We just, we just saw it. You know what? They always talk about it's the foundation that you build. That's what you build on. It's very cool. Chief? On behalf of the Manteca Boys and Girls Club, all the little ones who you see running around here and the safe environment that is provided here, just want to say thank you. Really, yeah, that's very cool. That's appreciation right there. <laughs> you can't beat that. Thank you very much. Well, there you go, folks. That was That's Phil Waterford, who is uh, from Phil Waterford, Ford Mercury, and North Main Street. And our fire chief here but why don't you announce this does not include your money yeah our current our new total up here and they're gonna once they show it up on here we'll tell people what it is and and there you go phil okay our new total is forty three thousand two hundred and twenty three dollars yeah wow thank you everyone thank you for your pledges keep them coming keep them coming thank you very much all right let me tell you what that that is uh tom and and alan get up there Ten thousand dollars. That's not too bad, and and that you can tell that ten thousand dollars in today's economy is a difficult thing to do, and with Phil stepping up to say that his dealership and his employees and all of his customers are contributing to the Boys and Girls Club, uh, ten thousand bucks. Very cool. So now I'm going to hand it off to two of my buddies back here. We got Tom yeah, and Alan. No, no, no. I'm fine. <laughs> all right, I'll move out of the way. But. <laughs> Wow, we were just looking at each other and saying $10,000. That is that just is so great. exciting. Phil Waterford, I mean, obviously, a man like that, he, he doesn't have to do it. He's done many, many thousands of dollars before. Uh, no one would blame him. because he put $10,000 right here on Name of Street. Seriously, because he <laughs> should be getting that here.
operating. Bill, he brought a pickup truck out to the to the yard. He always brings a few vehicles to show them off. But when he told me that that truck was mine, that he he ha handed me the keys to thank me for for the work that I do, I lost my. Uh, Equilibrium. <laughs> right on the floor. I did, I lost it. Wow. Um, you know, that's the only one we had on the lot. And I won the best truck that we had for the best man that supports this country, that supports our veterans. That I've never seen anybody with a passion uh, for our country and the dedication uh, to our armed forces uh, as yourself. And I, I just, you know, you're so deserving of the best way. Um, we love you. We love the work that you've done and that you continue to do. I mean, you're committed. Uh, people don't know what it takes to put on this event. <clears throat> but this man, he has dedicated his life. When I talk about being successful and significant, you have to ask yourself this question. If you didn't show up, who would miss you and why? If you didn't go home, who would miss you and why? The people that add value to other people's lives are the ones that are significant. And this man here, and Susan, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't miss Susan, they add so much value to the lives of the people in this community and their inspirations, not only for me, and, uh, but really for America. But again, it was just such an honor to, um, to, uh, to uh, provide this, this wonderful automobile to a wonderful man. So. But what's really amazing about everything is, you know, there were only 250 tickets that were sold for each car. The odds of winning, obviously, are 1 in 250. And that's actually pretty good odds. It's better than a lot. But, uh, you know, some of my friends, they, they, to support the cause, they bought multiple tickets, 20, 30 tickets at a time. So really what they did is they increased their chances of winning. And in a weird way, I kind of was hoping they would win because, you know, they support the cause so much and they really increased their odds. So, you know, I kind of really expected I was going to pick their name out. Well, on the day of the uh, event, we put a name out and it said Susan Fury I mean, from Stockton. And, you know, winners do not have to be present to win, so she wasn't there. And um, Shelly uh, Dillman, who is uh, a prosser, who's uh, Mike's daughter, I, you know, Mike is, is definitely the, the, um, the, I want to call him the brains behind this outfit, but he's, this, is, this is his event. I mean, this is his passion. This is his deal. But, Shelly has really become the heartbeat of everything that goes on. I mean, she does so much behind the scenes. So immediately, she took the raffle ticket out of my hand. She gets on her phone. I'm calling her right now. She calling. She says she's not answering. She's not answering. She kept calling, and then my phone was ringing, and I couldn't quite get over there to get it. And I thought, okay, I'll just you know I'll, I'll pick up the voicemail, and then I try to go back to sleep again. You kind of roll around, and I'm like, yeah, should I go to the emergency room today? I'm not sure. And my phone rang again, and I couldn't quite get it. So then finally I ran again and I thought, oh my gosh, this must be really important. I did realize, you know, the drawing was supposed to happen at 6 o'clock and by now it's 7, so I knew it wasn't the car, you know. So I thought, geez, this person really, you know, needs to get a hold of me somehow. So I crawl over and I get my phone and there's this young woman's voice uh, on the other end. And it was that your daughter, Pastor Shelley, Mike? Shelley, Shelley, okay. And she's like, is this Susan, you know, very yes. And she goes, you just want a car. And I thought wow, I am still under conscious sedation, or it's my fever, you know? I'm like, I, I, in my head, you know how you dream and you think you've done something and you haven't? And I thought, oh, I must be dreaming I answered my phone because I went to bed thinking about, oh, the drawings at six, and I look at the time, it's after seven, so it can't be that. And so I was in complete shock. I really couldn't believe, and I really had never won anything before in my life, and uh, I was absolutely in complete shock and uh, stupor and uh, a little feverish at the same time, but probably, uh, be rich with excitement at that point, too. I found out a couple days later who Susan is, and I just could, couldn't believe it. I mean, to find out, first of all, that she's a breast cancer survivor, that hits home to me because my mother's a breast cancer survivor. And, you know, um, as you said so eloquently earlier, Latinas and African Americans have a higher mortality rate than the general population, primarily because they're misinformed. Um, but it's no longer a death sentence. So we've done a number of things within the dealership to try to raise awareness and even money, you know, to, find a, uh, to try to find a cure for this despicable disease that affects everyone. So to know that she was a breast cancer survivor, that hit really close to home. Then to find out that she is a disabled veteran, that she served in Desert Storm, that she 
only purchased one ticket, has never really won anything in her life, uh, has a prosthetic, walks with a cane. Um, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. U.S. Army, and to top it off, she drives a 1993 Ford Festiva, and she went to a 2012 Ford Fiesta. Woo! I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, my prayer was, in the end, that whoever wins this car would be somebody who really needs it and deserves it. And I gotta tell you, our prayers were answered. I see it, your old car is here, and how long did you have this car? I'm actually the second owner. A lady had passed away in Stockton, and I needed a car to commute. You know, I, I was so blessed. I used my GI Bill to buy a home out in Stockton. And uh, it was one of those situations where they're like, okay, you can afford a home up to this much, and it was that much like plus a dollar. So it's like, woo! So you have the home, you know, and you don't know how you can make the payment or the two hour drive to go work with our wounded in Palo Alto. On top of that, at the time I had a eight cylinder Jeep Grand Cherokee. And I'm like, hey, it's not gonna work so well. And back then the gas was $1.55, that was in 2000. So anyway, I said a prayer and I opened up the, I have to bring the penny saver with me. I was in Mountain View, opened it up, and here was this Ford Festiva. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Ford Festiva. Because when I was on active duty, I had a silver Ford Festiva. And when I came back from the war, I called it, I was familiar with Scuds shooting across the air. So I called it the uh, Silver Scud. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I gave that to my first sergeant when I left. And, and he called me five years later and said he was still driving it. Um, he had moved out to Port Louis, Washington. And, uh, and so then I, I really love uh, Ford products. I, I love my Festiva. After my injury, uh, my family, literally my brother, took the Festiva and locked it away. He took it to a truck yard and hid it, and I cried and whined so bad that once I could almost do the clutch again, um, they let me have it back again. Um, I just love it, and it's, it's my car. And um, it's been such a great runner, it's a great product, and um, I was just uh, shocked to find out I actually won a Ford Fiesta. And also my grandfather, he's a World War II veteran, and uh, he loves Fords. He, drove, he was 12, and he drove his grandfather's Model T Ford. And when I was a young girl, I thought that meant that I should start driving at 12. And my mom said that was not the point of that story. <laughs> and so today, my grandmother, my grandfather's passed away before he died in Main Street, brought her a brand new Ford Taurus, so, so. Yeah. It's such a, an honor to, to know Susan and to know her story. She's been such an inspiration, not only to, uh, to me and my family, but to our community. And everybody who hears this amazing story, uh, so it's, uh, it really is with honor that uh, this 2012 Ford Fiesta to be Susan. I know that will put it to A family's agony after parents leave their baby in a hot car. She survived, but now all their lives have changed forever. New tonight, Laura Cole is in Manteca with how that little girl is doing four years later. <laughs> Most parents never think it'll happen to them. <laughs> Justin Marson's four-year-old Sarah Corinne, unable to walk, so unable to talk. We're reminded of the loss each and every day of the things that she's not able to do now. In 2008, the family had just returned home from a funeral. And in the process of getting out of the car, Sarah Corinne was left in the hot vehicle for three hours. She was only nine months old. It's a simple miscommunication. It's not anything that was, you know, intentional. Her core temperature was 107. Whoa. Doctors didn't think she'd make it. Sarah Corinne's recovery has been long. She has some residual brain damage, and she can't do things most four-year-olds can do. But instead of focusing on the negative, they're choosing to use this experience to educate. And the family brought their message here to Manteca Ford, using thermometers to show people just how hot it can get in a closed car. And the results have been positive. He says most customers seem willing to listen. Even in the shade, it's still 107, 107 degrees inside the vehicle. And he hopes his biggest life lesson will serve as a lesson to others, so no child ever suffers the same way Sarah Corinne has. The family is hoping to send Sarah Corinne to a treatment center in Toronto, Canada. Manteca Ford is donating $200 from every car they sell for the next week to help pay for her treatment. Mm.
Thank you, Christina. And with the heat that we just heard about, it's a lot to think about, especially if you've got kids. In fact, this week alone, because the heat wave is all across the nation, really, eight kids have died after they were left in hot cars. Last week, we introduced you to Sarah, a four-year-old little girl who suffered some brain damage when she was accidentally left in her family's minivan. Sarah Karen hopes to go for a four-week treatment program. That's in Toronto. It is going to be incredibly expensive, though. That's where Phil Waterford of Manteca Ford has stepped in to help here. $200 from every vehicle he says that they sell at Manteca Ford is going to help Sarah Corinne's treatment. Photojournalist Larry Mukowski captured how a Manteca car dealership is now going to help this little girl get the treatment she needs so badly. Uh, while Sarah Corinne was taking a nap in the back seat, we each thought the other was going to bring her inside to finish her nap. Three hours later, we, we rushed out to the car and she was clinging to life, really very shallow breaths, and the doctors really only gave her three days to live. For a little girl, Sarah Corinne, um, isn't this girl beautiful? Look at her. Phil was helping out uh, to raise some money for Sarah Corinne to go to her treatment, uh, to the Life Treatment Program in Toronto. So many people have been so gracious. They come in with donations, $20, $10. How did you hear about this? I saw her on TV the other day. I saw her on TV. Every little bit counts. And the total has grown since then. And uh, we just want to say we appreciate. This here is the total amount that was generated for Sarah Corinne. You know, we asked for something and we started to receive it. And I think that as long as we can continue to do that, people will help. There are a lot of good people out there that want to make a difference, and they've proven that. The generosity of the people here in Manteca and across Northern California, um, it's something that you really can't put into words. But to, but to be able to take Sarah Corinne to Toronto to this treatment program, we really believe that she's going to benefit from this greatly. And that treatment is very, very expensive. Uh, they say if it succeeds, though, and it is expected to, she is going to succeed in kindergarten. And she already started kindergarten. Her classes started last week. Good for her. A sobering heads up here tonight as the region gets ready for the late summer heat wave. A Manteca father is warning parents about the dangers of leaving children in the car. The night team's Chris Riva tells us that dad hopes that his mistake can save others. Is that funny? Is that funny? Four years ago, Justin Marson thought he would never have an exchange like this with his daughter again. Justin, his wife and their four children, just had got home on a hot day. When we got home, she was taking her nap. And we each thought the other had brought her inside and put her in her crib to finish her nap. And uh, three hours passed when we realized that neither one of us had done that. Sarah Corinne was barely alive, suffering from a heat stroke and organ failure. We wrapped a wet towel, cold wet towel around her to try to, to uh, decrease her temperature and while she was in my arms I had this overwhelming feeling of I can't believe she's going to die in my arms. Doctors told Justin and his wife she would live three days. She okay while she recovered from organ failure she did suffer brain damage. This really can happen to good parents. Into the evening hours, it is still around 90 degrees here in Manteca, but inside this vehicle, it's 110 degrees. If a child were inside, it would be only a matter of minutes before it would be a life or death situation. Which is why Justin wants to tell his story, so another parent does not endure what his family has. And so I believe that I have a responsibility to not only my daughter and my family, but other kids of responsible parents. In Manteca, Chris Riva, KCRA 3, 19. Your heart just goes out to that family. Sarah Corinne is still going through a lot of rehabilitation right now. When the Manteca Ford dealership heard about the family story, they decided to donate some of their proceeds to help pay for her therapy.